into the Word of God. Listen, this morning, guys, I'm going to take you on to something. It may be a standalone message. It's called Heart Check. Heart Check. That's the title of the message this morning, Heart Check. Now, we, uh, there's a couple of things that we need to understand about our heart, okay? Now, this is not like a, a medical message, all right? <laughs> like, we better check our heart, you know? Um, this is a spiritual message. This is a spiritual message. Um, And let's go ahead and start off with the scripture for today, Brother Jebby. It's found in John chapter 14, verse 1. And it says here, Jesus is speaking. He says, do not. So I say, do not. not. Let your hearts be troubled. Hmm. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, and Jesus says, but believe also in me. Now, as I was uh, meditating on this, I really felt that the Lord is not saying, hey, guys, you know what? Just in case your heart gets troubled, don't let it. That's not, that's not what he's saying here. He's saying this. Your heart is already in trouble. So stop that. He's saying, because you believe in God. And back then, guys, of course, Jesus hadn't been sacrificed on the cross yet. He was still there with them in person. So the only person they could believe in was God. And they were having a difficult time believing in Jesus because he was saying he is God in the flesh. And so at this point, there hasn't been a sacrifice. There was no cross yet. There was no remission of sin and none of that. So he was telling them, guys, yes, you need to believe in God, but you're going to need to believe in me because your hearts are in trouble. Oh, praise God. Now, let's go in here, man. Mm -mm -mm. Y'all going to learn something this morning. The word heart there, heart. I looked up the, I went into some little, uh, little Hebrew type of just kind of went and did some definition searching on the word heart. Because the word heart here, guys, is not talking about the organ. Okay, it's not talking about the organ. It's not like Jesus lives in your little fist-sized heart. <laughs> Are you here? Yeah. That's not what it's talking about. It's not talking about your organ, the heart that pumps blood. It's talking about more than that. Watch this. The word heart... In the Hebrew is the word lev, L-E-V, lev, or levavot, levavot. That's the Hebrew word for the word heart, which actually means the core, the center, the root, or the innermost being of a person. That's what the word heart here means. You ever heard the term that says, let's get to the heart of the matter? What does that mean when somebody says, let's get to the heart of the matter? Does that mean your organ? Let's pull your organ out and let's look at it. (laughs) Right? That costs a lot. That's a big copay. It's not talking about that. The organ. It's talking about let's get to the root of the situation. Let's get to the root of the trouble. Come on. Let's get to what's really going on in your heart because that's why you're getting yourself in trouble. Can I tell you this, guys? Trouble doesn't start out here. Trouble starts in the heart. That's why Jesus made mention of things like if you have already uh, looked at a woman with perversion in your Heart, you've already committed adultery. You see what I'm saying? He's saying there's something deeper than just what's going on out here. If it has already, if you already see trouble going on out here, it's because, boy, there's already a root system that has grown up and produced some fruit that is not good. Jesus talks about either let the tree be good and the fruit be good, or let the tree be bad and the fruit be bad. 
So there is a reason. There is actually a legitimate reason why trouble is occurring out here. It's because the heart is in trouble. Are you here? So when our kids get in trouble, it's not that it's something that, you know, and most of us say, hey, well, I didn't teach you that, right? Come on, how many have ever told your kids that? I didn't teach you that. That's not the way I, that's not what we, no, no, it's, it's not because of what you taught them. It's because of their heart. There's something going on in their heart. That's why they're in trouble. The trouble part that came out of here is the, is the fruit. It's a result of what's going on in the heart. That's why Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled because uh, he says you believe in God. And that's probably why you're in trouble. But you need to believe in Jesus because Jesus is the one that gets you to the father. And you need to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. Praise God. So that you can be saved. Saved from what? From trouble. Because all the trouble that goes on out here is nothing in comparison to the trouble that's up ahead. So the word heart there is to the core, the center, the root, the innermost being of a person. Now, uh, in Hebrews 4.12, we're not going to have it up there, but it talks about that the word of God knows the intent of the heart. Again, not the organ. The real you, the root of who you are, the center of who you are. See, um, our bodies, it consists of three layers, right? You got the ectoderm, you got the metaderm, and then you got the uh, endoderm. Now, I know that's, that's the body. That's not the skin. The skin, you got the epidermis and the, all these other names. Either way, that has three layers, too. The skin does. But the body itself has got three layers, Three. God's the number of three. Body, soul, spirit. Spirit, soul, body. Okay. But then there's a fourth layer. What Dr. Bill Winston calls the fourth dimension. The innermost being. The spiritual you. The one that's deep on the inside that needs to be changed. And watch this. God never changes us from the outside in. He changes us from the inside out. And that's why Jesus needs to be brought into your heart, which is the core of who you are. And then he works through the endoderm, the metoderm, and then the ectoderm. And that's where change happens. Praise God. Come on, you see our teenagers right now, a lot of people will say, man, our teenagers are in trouble and this and that. They're just always constantly doing this and this and that. Yes, because there's something wrong with their heart. The Bible says guard your heart, for out of it comes the issues of life. So you got to do a heart check. What's in your heart? What's in there? Okay, and here's how you can tell that Jesus ain't in there. Is there trouble going on out here? Well, we say we're saved. Oh, we come to church. But is there a bunch of trouble going on out here? You're getting yourself in some trouble. You're always getting yourself in some stuff. It's a, it's a, it's a continual um, cycle of trouble. Well, it's not that, it's that Jesus ain't really in there. We got to let him get in there into the center of who you are. Oh, you believe in God, but Jesus says, hold on. But you need to believe in me because I am the way to God. <laughs> Come on. Somebody. Nobody comes to the Father except through Jesus. So at that time, them people they didn't have Jesus, the door, to get into the Father yet. He had to be sacrificed. Amen. And so we got a lot of people talking a good game. Come on. Well, I believe in Jesus, or I believe in God, and I go to church, but yet they're in all kinds of trouble. And I'm like, wait, hold on. You need somebody to take the place of that. Yeah. Because when Jesus shows up, trouble flees. Amen. 
I was talking to somebody last night, and they asked me. They, were, they had an interview with me last night. Somebody interviewed me. Come on. Channel News 9, okay? <laughs> I said, okay, go ahead. What question do you want to ask me? He said, how did you get into ministry? I said, well, sit down, bro. No. <laughs> so, you know, we, we talked about it. Anyway, so at the end of that thing, I said, you know, to me, I don't understand what it is to go back to my old self. I don't understand that. I have no concept of that. I have no concept of going back to drugs. I don't know what that is like. I don't know what that feels like, and I don't want to know. I don't know what it's like to go back to porn. I, I have no idea, and I don't want to know. I have no idea what it is to go back to smoking, to snorting, to dropping acid. I have no idea. I have no idea what it is to go back to cussing. I have no idea what it is to go back to vi being violent. I have no concept of that because Jesus... When he took over, it was his idea, and he took over. I, I, don't, have a, I don't have a concept of a 12-step program to get me off drugs. I don't know anything about that, just a one-step program. And that was to come to him. He came into my heart, took the trouble out. Because I, had, I, I was in a lot of trouble. Not just with the law, which I was, but with addiction and all kinds of addiction food addiction porn addiction drug addiction all that but when jesus came to move into my heart the core of who i am now my heart's no longer troubled come on somebody and this idea that you know some people i get it some people what's the process I, I get it but maybe it's because you believe in god but you ain't believing in jesus And guys, I'm here to tell you, this is not a beat down message. This is a message to let you know, you need Jesus. And, you know, we say that, we say that all the time. We say that statement, man, they need Jesus. Like, literally, they need Jesus. Why are you saying that? Because they're always getting in trouble. There's always trouble going on. There's always trouble. There's always trouble. No, it's because they need Jesus to take the place of trouble and create freedom. See, Coming to Jesus is not just some religious act that we do, guys. It's not just because we sit in church, you know, we're all, man, forget that religious junk. I'm going to tell you right now. Throw that junk out the window. It's not doing you any good. What you need to have is a relationship with him to the point where he comes and abides in you. Come on, somebody. He comes and lives in you. Come on, somebody. So that he can produce the fruit that you need in your life. Because instead of trouble, you produce love. Instead of trouble, you produce joy. Instead of trouble, you produce peace. Instead of trouble, you produce faithfulness. Come on, let me say that one again. Faithfulness. Instead of trouble, you produce, come on, all the gentleness, the meekness, come on, self-control. Let me say that one again. Self-control. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can't control my mouth. Yeah, you can. It's that your heart's in trouble. It's not a mouth issue. It's a heart issue. Yeah. I, can't, I can't stop cussing. It's because you have a heart issue. <laughs> come on. I can't stop cheating. El corazón, and I'm not talking about the organ. I'm talking about the deepness, the who you are. I'm always constantly in trouble. I just can't get out. It's a hard issue, guys. It's you need Jesus in there. Come on. I mean, I had to go through a couple of relationships in my past to learn how now to conduct this one. And thank God, because you may be little. I'm serious. She may be short in stature. She may be like Zacchaeus climbing a tree. But uh, she's a powerful woman right here, guys. And you know what? I, I, me? I already know. Not that I'm scared of her. I ain't scared of her. I'll put. But <laughs> I ain't trying to get in trouble, guys. Don't, don't be laughing too, too loud now. I already did. Okay, praise. I got there. Lord, my heart, please. <laughs> No, 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 watch. I ain't scared of her, but I highly honor her. I highly respect her. Watch this. Not because... I'm back. I'm back in good graces now. Thank you, Jesus. 
watch guys, not because her name is Monique Garcia originally. She's Guzman now, praise the Lord. But because she's God's daughter. That's God's daughter. And how I treat her lets me know how my relationship with him is. You, that's how you can check your heart pulse. You want to check your heart pulse? How's your relationship with your wife? How do you treat her? Men, I know I'm talking to the men up in here. How do you manage your wife? How do you manage your spouse? How do you manage your home? How do you manage your kids? You get frustrated all the time? Heart issue. You get mad and angry all the time? Heart issue. You cheating, looking at other women? Heart issue. Okay, women, you're too. You guys looking around at other men? Heart issue. <laughs> you saying, you, okay, you know what I'm saying? Like, you got to get your heart right. How? Just put Jesus in there. That's what, he, you need Jesus in there. That's how you get it right. There ain't nothing in your own strength that you can do to get it right. He says he took, he, he knew no sin, right? Come on, he knew no sin. He who knew no sin was made sin for you. And then he said, and then he took that from you and made you the righteousness of God, which means you are now in right standing with God. How? Because Jesus is in your heart. Amen. And guys, it's time to get to that point because if not, that world out there is very, 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 it'll suck you in fast. If you ain't got a hold of anything, if you ain't got a hold of the Holy Spirit, if you ain't got a foundation that's on the rock, if you ain't got your faith intact, if you ain't got your love factor going on, if you ain't got your heart right, that world out there will suck you in and will drain you and will damage and hurt you and take you out because it does not care for you. And you want to keep after it with that? Go ahead. But I'm just telling you right now, it's not going to do you any good. Heart check. I got to do heart checks all the time. Because there are times, guys, that even I, I get frustrated with some things. But I'm not going to let it come out here because I, I learn already I got to deal with it in here. Yeah. And I've got the fruit of self-control. So I ain't got to say everything I think. Sometimes I get in trouble because I do, and I shouldn't have done it. And then I have to ask for forgiveness, Lord. You know, and I have to ask for forgiveness from him first, and then ask for forgiveness from my wife because I done said something I shouldn't have said. But I always constantly have to have heart checks going on in me. And he done commanded to me, told me, do not let your hearts be troubled because they will at some point. That word trouble right there, guys. It's not just like trouble. In the Hebrew, it's the word, um, what I got in here? Oh, yeah. It's the word tigratsu. Tigratsu. Spelled T-I-T-H. That's the word tithe in it. Come on. Trouble. You know, it's a, so tigratsu, T-I-T-H-G-R-A-Z-U. Or the word ragas. Not riegas, you know, la regaste. No, 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 not that. All right. So, well, that could be trouble. Yeah, you're in trouble, bro. But watch this. It actually means the word, it actually means this. Deeply disturbed or deeply agitated or deeply troubled. Like deeply. That means there's something in the, on the inside of you that's deep in there. That humanistically speaking, we can't get to. It's going to take Jesus. Now, here's the interesting thing about that. After Jesus has said this in verse 15, he goes on to talk about that I'm going to go to the Father. Watch this. And he says, and I'm going to ask him to send you another comforter. That will be my representative down here on this earth. So it's, it's funny how the order of God is. Level one, trust God. Level two, trust Jesus. Level three, trust the Holy Spirit. 
Because when he said, I will send you another comforter, he was talking about the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Come on, somebody. You got triple. A threefold cord is not easily broken. Amen. Come on. Amen. One is good. Two is better. But a threefold cord is not easily broken. God is good. Jesus is better. But the Holy Spirit, all three in one, praise God, it cannot be broken. And you put him, you put them, you put him, them, three in one, you put them in your heart, the core of who you are, and trouble leaves. Amen. Now you know how to, you know, I had a phone call the other day and there was some stuff going on in their family. And I said, and he said, man, you know, he asked me for strength. He said, Pastor, I just need strength. And immediately God said, no, you don't need strength. You need wisdom. What? Yeah, you need wisdom on what to do about the situation. You don't need strength. Strength is just you being able to muster it up and hold it in and I'll be able to. No, no. You need more than strength. You need wisdom to be able to know exactly what to say. See, this is all part of your heart not being troubled. When your heart ain't troubled, you can think clearly. You can now pray. You can seek God. And you're not moved by what you see. Praise God. Because we don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. Praise God. And now we're able to know exactly what we need to do. And not only that, you can see what's going on inside your kids. You can tell. The other day, little Remy kind of did something kind of weird. She took off without an explanation. She took off because right now she's in potty training. You ever been there? Okay. So she's in potty training. She's doing very good. But every now and then, she slips up. Okay, so we're just sitting there, and we're up, everything was cool. Everything was okay. And all of a sudden, she takes off, and she sits in the room, in her room for a little bit. And I kind of noticed, where's Remy at? And so I was in the kitchen. I looked like that, and I noticed Remy kind of was peeking out her room like this. She was looking into the living room, and I seen her. And then she immediately goes, Poof. <laughs> She like ran back into her room. And I was like, what was that about? And my wife's like, I don't know. I said, what happened? Did she get in trouble? Did you tell her? She's like, no, I, not, I don't know what happened. I said, let me go check and see what's going on. See, my mind would say, ah, that's just Remy playing. But nah, it can't be that. There's something not right. You see what I'm saying? Something's not right. PJ, why are you, ¿Qué andas haciendo? Are you pe peeking out the room and look coming real high? Something wrong. What, what's going on? No reason for you to be acting that, out of character type stuff. It was like, go back in there, and she's hiding behind the door. And I said, mija, I said, boo-boo. I call her all kinds of names. I, go, I went down to the list of names that I call her, boo-boo, uru, doo all these other names. And it was like, I said, you okay, mama? And she said, no, no, nothing, nah. And I was like, what are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> no, no. I said, did you do something wrong? She just looks at me, she's like, yeah. I said, what, what happened? Nothing. <laughs> and then immediately I said, did you, did you do something in your underwear? She said, yeah. I said, boo, come on out here. Don't worry about it. It's OK. You're not in trouble. She thought mom was going to get onto her because mom would be like, you better not be doing that in your, because she's probably training right now. You know what I'm saying? And like. Things cost money nowadays, you know. <laughs> Buying them, throwing them away, and then having to buy more, you know. So we got her out there, and we showed her the grace of God. Come on, somebody. It's okay, Miha. Don't worry. It's, come on. It's okay. Well, I, you've been doing so well. You've just been doing good. Took care of it, cleaned it up, chunked that pair of joints. But then she was better. See, if my heart wasn't good, I would have yelled at her. She would have got a spanking. She would have got the old TDT, pow, you know what I'm saying? She would have got the whole belly to belly suplex, all WCW would have broke out right there in her room. It all ring, ding, ding, ding. And in this corner, no. <laughs> the mic would have came from the ceiling and And in this corner. No, 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 watch. No, 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 wait, hold on. It was just something going on. We've seen that. Because our heart's right. Our heart's not troubled. 
And let me just tell y'all parents this. When your heart is right too, you don't have to yell at your kids. You really don't. I know you want to because you think they can't hear you. And after the third time of telling them to throw the trash, you want to scream, you want to choke, and you belly belly the suplex, you want to do all that. But you really don't have to. You can tell them. Here's what you need to do. And then if they don't listen, then you give them the wisdom. See, but all this comes from the Holy Spirit because God's no respecter of person. Amen? He's not looking at age. Like, in other words, God's not going to, go ahead and drink me. Go ahead. And then give me a drink, too. No, just kidding. <laughs> um, like, like, God's not just like, well, I'm just going to talk to the adults in the house because they know me better. No, 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 man. We all got the same heart, the same trouble. One Jesus. And that child, I don't care how old they are, four years old like Remy is, if she, you speak under the authority of the Holy Spirit to her, she will understand. But we're too afraid nowadays because our kids are so involved in all kinds of stuff and they think they're cool. And you think that, you know, oh, they think that it doesn't matter. What's cool is that you have the Holy Spirit on the inside of you, and so does she. And when you talk to them, they will listen because they get convicted. Where? In their heart. Why? That's where Jesus is going to be. But we, we try to figure life out. And we try to, well, I guess I have to do this, go buy them an iPad. You know, go give him my phone, give him this and that. Every now and then, I'll take the iPad away from Remy. Remy, give me that over here. You're watching that, man. It's too much stuff. Sometimes she learns stuff from on there. Even though it's, it's, it's kid stuff, she learns stuff from on there. I'm like, where'd you learn that from? I'm like, ah, that iPad. So I, I take it away, and then I become the iPad. I start acting out like monitos and everything. I start doing that. I do that with her. Seriously, I do. I'll, I'll, like, if she has little monitos there, I'll be like, hello. How you doing? And she'd be like, I'm fine. I'd be like, well, that's good. What are you doing today? Well, I'm cooking, because she has a little cook set. I'm cooking burgers, like Hector over there. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, that's so good, Remy. Can I have one? Oh, sure. And then, boom, we, we create a whole scenario right there, a whole total. I become the iPad. Praise God. And we will go on forever to the point, my wife would be like, how in the world are you sitting there just creating something like that? I'm like, because I'm creative. That's the creator created me, the creation, to be creative. Amen. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Why? My heart ain't trouble. Praise God. Jesus lives in my heart. He's there. And I honor him. And I bow down to him. And I worship him. And I love him. And I listen to him. And I, I, I'm led by the Spirit to the best of my ability. Because I got people in my house that if I act up, they're going to act up. And sometimes Remy does act up, and my wife sees that's you. That's, you, that's the you side. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And when she don't listen, I'm like, hey, that's the you side last morning. <laughs> Why do I got this in my hand for anyways? Praise God. Sister Dreamer. I was thirsty. <laughs> you gave me something to drink. Praise the Lord. What am I saying? <sighs> you don't always have to be in trouble as long as you got Jesus in there. You don't, let, you don't need to let your heart be trouble. You don't have to. It's a choice. It's a choice, Jay. He's right. Were you taking notes, bro? What? Are you? No? He's like, no. Okay. You're in trouble, bro. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, he's not. He's a good kid. He, Jay's a good kid. So what am I saying, guys? Heart check. Check it. What's in your heart? And you can tell by what comes out of here. You can tell. It means you need to get back in that prayer closet, spend time with him. Amen. Is that good? Did you guys receive something this morning? Yeah. Amen. Let's give God a praise. Let's stand to our feet. We're going to get out here early today. Brother Ruben, look at that. Aww. Brother Ruben's happy. Mira. He's jumping up and down. 
Praise God. We had an usher interest meeting this morning. We had a couple of ushers join us, but I want to just invite some of you guys in here and some men. Y'all guys join the team, guys. All right? I'm asking you, join the team because I need your help. All right? Can I say that? Is that okay to say that as a pastor? I need your help. I need your help. I need your help to make sure that this facility runs the best that it can and that it's the safest place for our people to come, the most securest place for our people to come. And you don't have to be just a man. You can be a woman, too, if you want to be on the usher team. But I'm saying, I need your help. And I believe that I got some good, awesome men in this house that can make that happen. And when you start serving in this house, you'll see how God serves in your house. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, Father, we thank you, God, today, this morning for the word of God. We thank you for your presence in this house. We thank you for the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding. Father, we thank you, God, for the heart check. And this morning, Father, I just ask if there's anybody in this room that may need you into their hearts, that you would come into their hearts today. And if that's anybody in this room, if you just lift up that right hand, I want to help you. We want to pray with you. If anybody in this heart, you, you, I mean, anybody in this house, you feel like, man, I really need Jesus to come into my heart because there's some things that are going on. I feel like I'm in just in trouble. I, I see that hand. I see that hand. Come on, somebody. Amen. Praise God. Anybody, on this, everybody else, anybody else in this room, you just feel like I need Jesus in my heart, man. There's just too much trouble going on. I see that hand. I see that hand. Come on. There's four more. There's four right there. Anybody else in this room? Praise God. This is the only opportunity you may get. And I'll be honest with you, God knows who's supposed to be here and who's supposed to hear this message. And sometimes we come to church not because we want to, but because we need to. Four people in this house are about to receive Jesus in their heart. Amen. Come on, somebody. Anybody else? Anybody else? All right, let's all pray together as a family, guys, together. Let's say this. Say this with me. Say, Father God. I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. I believe that Jesus was sent and died on the cross for all my sins. And in three days, he rose from the dead. And I believe that Jesus and your Holy Spirit, Lord, can come into my heart and change me, transform me, make me brand new. And at this point, and at this time, I now receive Jesus into my heart as my Lord and as my Savior. Take me out of this trouble. Come into my heart and take the trouble out. For I will not let my heart be troubled any longer. My heart is fixed trusting in the Lord. And I thank you for this. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Come on, let's give God a praise in the house. Amen.